we're going to take a look at how to make a pad mounted 12240 four wire service. So we're making an open bank with pad mounted transformers. Begin by completing your job briefing, uh, hitting the five items uh, listed under OSHA guidelines. Some suggestions of things to look at for electrical hazards, fall hazards, trip hazards, first aid, work zone protection, and anything else with that. Overhead transformers and pad mounted transformers are exactly the same inside. They have transformer coils and cores and oil. Um, the only real difference that you'll notice is on a pad mounted transformer, the X2 is located in the bottom right hand side. And on an overhead transformer, the X2 is located in the center. The cases will be grounded. They're made of metal. Um, it's, it's important that we ground them on the overhead and just as important that we ground them on the pad mount and even more so because the public has access to them. We're going to locate two pad mounted transformers right next to each other. Uh, so determine which one of these is going to be the lighting transformer. Um, in this case, we're going to make the left hand side one the lighting transformer. It really wouldn't matter, but for connection purposes here, we're choosing the left one. Since we've chose the left hand lighting transformer, on the right side, we need to make sure that we remove the tank strap on the X2. Um, we can only ground one time on the uh, secondary side of this transformer, so it's important that the X2 strap of the non-lighting transformer is removed. If you forget, it's a dead short at 120 volts, so don't forget that. And if you do, it'll remind you. Hopefully it won't damage things. The next thing we'll do, of course, is ground the transformers. Now, grounding transformers becomes company specific, so I've just drawn that we've put ground rods in and ensured that they're connected. Since they are in close proximity to each other, we want to make sure we do a really good job of bonding these two cases together. You would hate to have some, somebody sitting on one transformer with their feet on the other and have something happen. So make sure that we've bonded them very well. And of course, the X2 on the lighting transformer gets connected to that system as well. Next thing we'll do, excuse me, the next thing we'll do is we will connect the system, the secondary neutral, to the X2 of the lighting transformer. So our neutral connection is now completed. After that, we're going to connect the X1 of the lighting transformer to the X3 of the power transformer. And this transformer on the right we're calling the power transformer. It's generally a little, generally a little smaller KVA as well. So an X1 to an X3. We actually could have done the X3 of the, the left one to the X1 of the right one. It really didn't matter. In this case, though, I chose the X1 to the X3. The next thing we'll do is I will connect the secondary lighting leg, one of the first lighting legs, to the X1 of the left-hand lighting transformer. The next wire I connect is the next lighting leg coming from the customer to the X3 of the lighting transformer. So at this point, the lighting transformer is feeding all of the lighting load, if it was hooked up yet, is, is feeding all of the lighting load. The last thing that we have to hook up, we hook wire number three to the X1 of the power transformer. This would be the wild leg at this point. So voltages from neutral to one would be 120, Neutral to 2 would be 120. Neutral to 3 would be the wild leg voltage of 208 volts. 1 to 2 would be 240. 1 to 3 would be 240. And 2 to 3 would be 240. So we now have our three phase. The primary side, you would connect one phase to the left hand transformer and one phase to the right hand transformer. They don't have to be A or B on either one of them. It would just change your rotations, but they have to be two different phases for this to work. So this is a completed open bank.